Okay, I want to talk really quick about sigma notation. And as I look at it, I'm like, I can see why people don't like this. However, it goes to something called Riemann sum. And Riemann sum is very important to calculus, so we have to get good at this. So let's just start with this idea. Uh, in sigma notation, all we're saying is that the sum of n terms, the first number plus the second number plus the third number, all the way out to the nth number, the last number, is written as this. So this says the summation of a sub i from i equals 1 to n is equal to the first number plus the second number plus the third number plus all the numbers in between plus the last number. And that might seem really stupid. Like, why wouldn't you just add them? Well, what if it, the summation was enormous? Uh, and the summation is going to become enormous for us because the rectangles, we're going to be looking at an area, the rectangles or the shapes that we're going to be counting are going to become very small so we can capture as much of an area as possible. So what do I want to tell you about this? I want to tell you that I is the index of summation. So that's right here. This I is the index of summation. This is an I right here. I is the index of summation. Um, a sub a sub i is the ith term. That's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth term of the sum. And the upper and lower bounds of the summation are n and 1. So this is 1 here. This is where we're going to start, and this is where we're going to end. So a couple quick examples, some really quick examples here. And then hopefully you'll watch the next video because that's the one that's going to start on Riemann sums and this thing called um, summation formulas, which are, are crucially important. So here we have this. We have this summation of i from i equals 1 to 6. Well, look, that's all this means is what it seems like. It means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. And we could summate that, and we could get an answer out there. And if you know what it is, well, that's terrific. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I have a hard time staying with this because it's such a pain. But having said that, I sound like I suck. I don't like I'm a crappy teacher. Uh, it's just really worth it to do this right, and you have to get this fundamental piece. So let's just do two more quick examples, and please stay with me, will you? So here's the summation of, let's do this, i plus 1 from i equals 1 to, I don't know, to 5, I guess. So if we, oh, let's start at 0. So if we did 0 plus 1, that would be 1, wouldn't it? 1 plus 1 would be 2. See, I'm taking 1. I started at 0, so 0 plus 1 is 1. Then I'm going to go to the next because I have to go all the way up to 5. So 1 plus 1 would be 2. 2 plus 1 would be 3. 3 plus 1 would be 4. 4 plus 1 would be 5. And it says we're going to stop at 5, so 5 plus 1 would be 6. Does that make some sense? Okay, let's try just one more, and we'll be done with this video. And I'm seriously, I'm, I'm, if you're still with me, I'm really proud of you because... It's a, it's a pain, and you're like, where is this going? It's going somewhere. I swear it's going somewhere, so stay with me. Let's try this. Let's go. Let's have the summation of j squared. So j is going to be our, in, our value from j equals 3 to j equals 7. So from j equals 3 to 7. So we would get what? Right, we'd get 3 squared because it says here that what is happening to our function is it's being squared, and we're starting at 3. So 3 plus 4 squared, plus 5 squared, plus 6 squared, plus 7 squared. And that's how we would do that. So thanks for hanging with me through this video. I know it's a pain, but that's sigma notation. And if you go to the next video that we're going to do together, then we're going to move on to area, and we're going to, we're going to start applying these summation formulas. So uh, take this and the summation formulas, and you can start finding area. All right? Okay, thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, Please do, and your comments.